اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بل نقذف بالحق علی الباطل فیدمغه فیذا هو زاہق ولکم الویل مما تصفون صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی ریسپیکٹیڈ ویورز اور لسنرز السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو The verse which I have recited is from Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse number 18. Allah says, Whenever the truth heard against the falsehood, it knocks out its brain, and the falsehood has to be perished forever. Chapter 21, verse number 18. Today, the topic is actually the instigation of one of my experiences with one of my students. You see, Allah created us on the basis of naturalism, common sense, basic instincts. If we do not have those, then we are not humans. It's a common sense. You must be chimpanzees or some primates. You see, I was discussing about Bible generally like Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So that student of mine asked me that what are these names? I said that these names are the authors of the Bible. And you will be shocked what reply I got it. You know, impetuously we are also used to say, okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And then we start discussing regarding the material of either the divine or not. So the student asked me the question, how come the book which is claimed to be from God has the authors who are men? And this is so deep. The question was, you know, went out, out of innocency. And it is very true. How come you say that this is the word of God and then all of the authors are men? So I smiled and I said that it's the big topic. Inshallah, when you will grow up, I will <laughs> explain to you all these anomalies. So that student of mine put me into uh, what you call thinking to instigate this topic in a nutshell that who were the authors of the Bible or are the authors of the Bible in actual in actual sense okay so without wasting further time let me jump directly to the subject I don't want to make long yard videos that you know you know what to call demotivate my viewers. I want to just give them the small sledgehammers in a big sizes. So, you see, let's start the authors. It is an amazing thing that Bible is the only book on the planet which has anonymous authors and ascribed divinity to the book pertaining to the authors. You will never find any book on the surface of the earth where humans are speaking and then you say this is from God and God is speaking. And you will never find it. All the authors in the Bible are unknown. Start scratching them and find the biographies of them. You will never be able to find it and I will start with the New Testament and then I will go back to Old Testament. So if we read New Testament, according to the authors and the scholars, they even rejected that even Matthew is not written by Matthew and Mark is not written by Mark, which were taken as the most, you know, original sources near to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. How come? Who are the authors? I wonder who was John? John is the Latinized, Angelicized forms of the names. You know what is the meaning of John in dictionary? Check the dictionary. Don't blame me that, you know, I said those. It means a prostitute 
or prostitutes, you know, what you call maybe the controller or whatever. I'm not interested in that. You can check it up. What is actually the prostitute's client maybe. Or the other meaning is toilet. You know why? Because John is not the name. Jonathan is the name. You see, so when you say Jonathan, it may might have some sense or the meaning. I don't know. But what is John? John is not a name. So Mark, Luke, so you have all negative connotations to the proper nouns and you are not aware of that. So who is this Mark? Who is this Matthew? Who is John? You have no biographies whatsoever and you are just assuming not me. Not I'm saying that now the authors are also saying that these are all presumed books, anonymous books written by anonymous people over the period of time of 2000 years. Culture came, traits came and those old values came, tradition came. Those, you know, what you call uh, societal, societal, cultural, you know, reforms, all these deep things of sociology came. Then the book was intact into one solid form and you call it Holy Bible. Your name is not even there. You put this name for convenience, like the way you say Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So did Matthew write Matthew? Let's see. Matthew 9, 9. It says, according to you, it's the book of Matthew, but it says internal evidence. And Jesus saw Matthew, the tax collector, the, by the name of Matthew, and he went to him and he said, Matthew, stand up. And Matthew stood up and he said, Matthew, follow me. And Matthew followed him. I said, who is writing this? It cannot be Jesus. It neither Jesus nor Matthew. Because if Jesus would have said or written down, he would say, and I saw tax collector by the name of Matthew. And I came to him and I said, Matthew, follow me. And he followed me. Or if Matthew was writing this, he would have said, and Jesus saw me, I was sitting at the tax collector's table, and he came to me and said, Matthew, stand up, and I stood up and I followed him. You can easily say the pronouns of subjective and objectives, they do not denote that they were written by these, both of these people. It is the third person writing. You know, we have these you know, stories in English, third person narrative. This is all you're saying. Somebody's writing. So who is that? We would like to know from you guys, Christians who talk about Quran, who talk about Hadith. I said, you know, the problem is in your own hands. You are in hell and you are sharing heaven with us. I said, for you know, focus and solve these problems and anomalies first, then talk to us. Judge ye not that you not be judged. Under what judgment you judging others, you hypocrites? Why you see the sliver in your brother's eye? First remove the beam from your own eye. Then see the speck or sliver in your brother's eye. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1. Who said it? Jesus Christ. Coming to the next point. Mark. Mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20. All of them are thrown out as a fabrication. And they have the formula there where Jesus said, and these signs my followers will have. You know, these signs will dwell in them. In my name, they cast off devils. Everybody is doing that. Easy job to make fool and tantalize people, bull, you know, bamboozle people. In my name, they will speak many foreign tongues. Okay, I can say, you know, give some credit. But in my country, Pakistan, they are helpless without the translator. If any foreign pastor, you know, this pastor comes, they need a translator. In my name, they will cast out devils. Okay, fine. Fair enough. In my name, we'll speak many new tongues. These signs in them, my followers, Jesus said, according to Mark, chapter 60, verse 9 to 20, which whole the passage has been taken out as a fabrication. But if you think that, no, it is not, then fulfill this test. Then further, Jesus said, if they take any, you know, hold any serpent, the serpent will not care, harm them. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not kill them or harm them. Nobody is doing the second two. The first two is easy. The latter one are hard. So, this is a problem. Then Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke was the physician of Paul. And he said very clearly, I am writing all these accounts 
not that the God has tickled me or Holy Spirit, but because I'm more learned, I'm more literate. So I will calculate, you know, I will accumulate or collect all those sayings of Jesus in a better and an organized manner. And then I will dedicate my work to my friend Theophilus. He didn't say that to the bulk of the masses. This is the church who decided that let's take Luke, let's take Matthew, let's take Mark and John later on to make them canonize because this is what we listen and we feel are the fittest to pick. I'm asking what happens to the gospel of Mary Magdalena? What happened to the, this gospel of Thomas? What happened to the gospel of Barnabas? Because these things were not suiting the church, early churches. And that's why we know that how they were canonized, all the Trinitarian, etc. It's not the topic. So here it goes. There's a problem. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. Ascension is also taken out. Then going to Luke. Luke said, it's already not my work. I'm not being tickled. I'm just writing for Theophilus. And then Luke also having a problem in the context. Luke chapter 24, verse number 51 says, where the Jesus was sent into heaven. This whole verse has been taken out as a fabrication. <laughs> then Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. John last chapter 21, it says, and this is the testimony of John who was the good man or was the testimony of John who was a very righteous person. Who's writing that all? Who is saying that John is the good man? Who is that person? Because you have the book. You say this is the word of God. Who is that person saying about this person? And there were so many things Jesus Christ did. If he were to, you know, write it down, all those things, even the heavens cannot hold it or hold them that all this knowledge. I said, according to you, Jesus was God. So how come he couldn't give you all the knowledge and all the truth? This doesn't make sense. Because you said Jesus was God. He came down to this planet and earth and God incarnate. Because you say that Jesus came down to this earth as God incarnate. Then how come he is not telling you all the truth which is missing? Because you don't have a case now. Because you said that Jesus came to tell every truth. But according to John and whosoever is endorsing him, he said it that we don't know. There are many things Jesus you know, was supposed to tell, but it's not written down. Now you will say that, no, it was transferred through Holy Spirit to the coming authors. I said, is this the reason? Is this the way you're telling that the coming authors? Then who was Luke? Who was John? John himself was inspired by Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit didn't give him enough Knowledge, because that is the person claiming or whosoever that the knowledge is not complete with us, whatever Jesus preached. So already you can see the, your, your problem is already there. So John is also dubious. And who is John, by the way? Ask these questions. Who was John? According to, you know, Britannica, this religious dictionary, they said very clearly, these are all unknown authors. Book of, the book of Kings, one and two. Book of, uh, what you call... Another one, what was the name? Chronicles 1 and 2. Unknown authors. You're assuming that maybe Solomon had written it down. You're assuming Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John and on. Then Paul. First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, verse 7. And there bear three records in the heaven. And there are three records that bear in the heavens. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all these three are one. This whole verse has been taken out as a fabrication in the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. So Paul's letters are also dubious. This is the documents you have. Coming to the Old Testament, first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy are ascribed to Musa alayhi salam. Moses, peace be upon him. 700 times we had this expression in the Bible and God spake to Moses. And Moses spake unto Lord. If Moses have written it down, then Moses should say, and I spake to God and God spake to me. Or if God was dictating, then God would have said, I spake to Moses and Moses spake to me. Third person. Then the fifth book, Deuteronomy, it gives the whole, you know, death and the funeral and obituary of Moses. Is Moses writing this all about his own death? And Moses died in the land of Moab and he was 120 years old and his natural powers were not abated and no one has known his sepulcher up to this day. 
I am asking, who is writing this all? You know, the clever Christian impetuously say, oh, it was written by Joshua. Just Joshua? Okay, if Joshua, did Joshua sign it? Did Joshua endorse it? As I told you, anonymous book, anonymous assumptions and presumptions, this will not work in the religion. Religion is not the name of in as much so, ought to be, supposed to be. No, sir, it, is, it should be based on the concrete foundation, rock foundation, ascertain. This is what knowledge of Islam and knowledge of religion should be. That is why Islam is the fastest religion and Islam and Quran is the only book on the surface of the earth which is totally intact. The date was revealed. Prophet Muhammad said, I am leaving you with the book which cannot be eradicated through water, from water, because this book has been stored into the hearts of the people, not on the parchments or papyrus, etc., which you have in your museum, and all are of not, you know, matching one another. 5,000 of New Testament, 20,000 of Old Testament in London Museum, and all those, you know, originals are not identical. This is how good your documents are. So, first by books, again, problem. Who wrote them? Nobody knows. Then, the books in the middle, you call it historian periods or minor prophets. I don't want to have time. I can also pull out many information. For example, Encyclopedia Britannica, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, uh, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, unknown authors. Who are those? And Bible says... Anyone who adds or subtracts anything from the word of God, plague be upon unto them. Jesus Christ said about the commandments as well as general from the text, of course. He said it very clearly that till the heavens and the earth shall pass away, one jot and one jot shall by no means pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. Whosoever breaks the least commandment and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever follows it and fulfills the command shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And he said clearly, verily, verily, I say unto you that accept the righteousness, uh, accept the, uh, what you call the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, exceed them. If you're not exceeding them beyond, you know, par excellence, then there is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew by keeping laws and the commandments. This is what Jesus says in the Bible. But you see, you don't quote these things. Accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Ye shall by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven, unless you better than the Jew than by keeping the laws and the commandment above the par excellence values. Then you are a righteous person in front of Jesus Christ. He said in Mark, when he said, good Rabbi, what should I do to get eternal life? He said very clearly, you want to get eternal life? Keep the commandments and then take off your cross. You are not of me who does not take off his cross and follow me. Follow me. Then you, you, there is a salvation and glorified Allah, God to follow him. This is what Jesus said. He didn't say that to worship me as a trinity. Where did he say that I am God and worship me? Nowhere. So all these books, you can see very clearly that you have problems and these are grave problems and contradiction by God. There are so many contradictions in the Bible. If I start, you know, expounding them, it will never end till doomsday. It will keep going endlessly. I'm ending this. I'm ending my talk with all these things. You see, the verdict is with respect, with humility, I'm telling to my Christian fellow brethren, brothers and sisters, come to Islam. You know that in your heart. These pastors are just taking money from you. You know that. You cannot question them. Go, I dare I question them. You see what they will do. They will defrock you from their community and gathering. So donations works there. Nothing else. And Jesus said that a rich man to enter into paradise is the same thing you put the camel into the eye of the needle.